I keep seeing this over and over and it's so pervasive in the online marketing world. People just taking course after course, but not executing. And to me, a great idea without execution is the definition of insanity. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. Hey, what's up? And welcome back to the Affiliate Guy Podcast. Now, as you may have noticed, we've gone a while without an episode. There's actually an, an intentionality to that. It was to give some space between kind of the, the way things were and the way things will be. Um, you can expect some differences in the way we do the Affiliate Guy Podcast going forward. Uh, first of all, you're gonna we're going to have more guests. Not always, but we're going to have more guests. Secondly, probably the episodes will run. Uh, it's hard to say. I don't. I don't intend necessarily for them to go longer, but I do want to dive deeper into topics. And so we're going to do these weekly going forward, so you have time. And it, <laughs> I did not plan this. Like I would. I wish I was smarter than this, but I'm not. I wish I was smart enough to have planned this. But I want to allow you time to execute on what you're learning. It's actually the topic of today is the real definition of insanity. And it's not what you think and it's not what you've heard. If you listen to the very beginning, I think that's actually the definition of insanity. But, you know, as many of you know, I've, I've been going through a, a reinvention of sorts. And in fact, I just got a text message. Let me pull this up. This was, this was cool. And I, I, I'm recording this at 4.22 p.m. I got this at 3.52 p.m. So 30 minutes ago. And it, it said, my friend, you are becoming the best version of yourself. Pretty cool. And that's what I like to think is that I am becoming the best version of myself now. And so part of this time off from the podcast was to allow me time to process and to, to reinvent myself. But as many of you have noticed, if you watched our Facebook lives, and you should be, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash Facebook, you, you should be. Uh, because we've had some amazing stories on and some amazing guests and we've had some amazing topics. And you may have noticed, and you know, it's, it's kind of obvious that um, I'm, I'm shrinking. <laughs> Actually, some parts are shrinking, some parts are getting bigger. Um, I'm reinventing myself and I'm, I'm putting my health at the forefront of everything I do. I'm reinventing myself as an athlete, not just as a businessman. And realizing just how important my health is. And a lot of that has to do with family. A lot of that has to do with the fact that I have a strong desire to walk my daughter down the aisle. And according to statistics, that's 23 years from now. And I got to be honest, I don't see a whole lot of 63-year-old men who look like I looked and who felt like I felt and made it to that age. I think of that. I think of the grandkids. I think of being 70 years old. Like, I, I mean, statistically speaking, I'm going to have to make it to at least my mid to late 60s to see my grandkids. And so because of that, I want to be around. I want to be healthy to be with them and to be with them for a long time. And so I'm reinventing myself. And this isn't a midlife crisis or anything. It's just the realization that you know, I woke up this morning and I feel better. I'm 40 years old. I feel better today than I did when I was in my peak physical condition in my late mid to late twenties. I feel better today. I can, I can run farther and faster, lift more for longer. I can do more with my body than I have, than I have ever been able to, at least probably since my teenage years. And that's awesome. And it feels good. And I'm thinking clear. My diet is to the point where like I have the mental clarity and focus to be able to do the things that I want to do. You know, the reality is I've been soft. And I'm going to share this, you know, this real definition of insanity with you today. The fact is I've been insane. I've been insane because of some of the things that I've been doing or not doing it's insane to know what I knew and not do what I should have been doing. And again, that's the real definition of insanity. We'll share that as we go along because this applies not to your, only to your health, not only to your fitness, 
this applies to your business. This applies to, you, you know, your journey with whatever you're doing in your online business. Before we get started real quick, I want to share a quick listener shout out though. It's a new feature of the podcast. We have an astronomical number of awesome five-star reviews and I've never said thank you, which is on me, completely on me. So every week I'm going to share a, uh, a, a, a review. <laughs> to think, what are these called again? I'm going to share a review in our listener shout out segment. And so if you have not yet, make sure you leave a rating and review in iTunes or wherever you listen to our podcast. Again, it helps people find us, helps us get in front of more people so we can spread this message to other people that need to hear this message. Uh, today's listener shout out is with Skip Foster. Now, Skip is somebody that's in my audience that I've gotten to know recently. Really cool guy. He's one of our no product, no problem students as well. And just, uh, I mean, just an awesome, awesome dude. We see him all the time on our Facebook lives. And I just, I love this guy. He's awesome. And a while ago he left a review and he said, this podcast is on my mandatory listening list. As soon as an episode is posted, I'm listening. If you're wanting to increase your income with affiliate marketing, or maybe start an affiliate program for your products, this is your podcast. Matt is the training center in my phone. That's so cool. Thank you, Matt, for being such a giver. And this was before I even got to know Skip when he left that review. And I just love that. I love the power of podcasting, the power of being able to be that training center in your phone. That's what I'm here for. So again, if you haven't left a rating review, you want to get mentioned on the show, like Skip. Um, if you include your URL, I'll mention your URL too. So you can get a little shout out there, get a little website traffic, which will always help you. Just like Skip, just go to wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a rating and review, honest rating and review. If there's something you don't like, if you don't think it's five stars, it's only four, shouldn't be less than four. You wouldn't be listening. Who, who keeps listening to a three-star podcast? No, we listen to the four and five stars, right? So leave me a rating review that'll help, uh, help us get in front of a lot more people. Also, make sure if you haven't yet, check out our upcoming Passion to Profit Path training at passiontoprofitpath.com. Put that in the show notes, passiontoprofitpath.com. We've got tons of upcoming times. I know as I'm recording this, we've got one next week and um, would love to share how to take your passion and turn it into a profit. How to take your passion and turn it into a profit. Because the thing is, um, you know, odds are there's something you're, you're super passionate about, right? You want to build a platform around it, but just having a passion isn't enough. You have to know how to monetize that passion and build a business around it. That's what this, what this podcast is all about, right? And it took me years to figure that out, probably five, seven years to figure out, like we're talking just massive frustration, doubt, confusion. Uh, I tell people all the time I was this close to giving up because I was so frustrated with not monetizing. But I developed this step-by-step -step system for turning my passion into a profit. And that's what we're sharing on the Passion to Profit Path training. So again, you can find that. We'll link in the show notes, passiontoprofitpath.com. So I mentioned, what's this real definition of insanity? Well, the real definition of insanity to me is having knowledge, but not applying it. You know, I always hear this thing, like w w the phrase, knowledge is power. No, it's not. <sighs> Applied knowledge is power. I heard somebody say once, and I wish I could give them credit, but I don't remember. If knowledge were power, AIDS wouldn't exist. If knowledge were power, AIDS wouldn't exist. And it's true. It never would have spread to the point where, you know, because today, unfortunately, you, you can, you know, you can get it uh, through fairly innocuous means, blood transfusions and whatnot. But it never would have reached that point if knowledge alone were power. And as I said at the top of the show, if a great idea without execution is the definition of insanity. And I, I encourage you, like, don't be insane like that. Don't be insane. Don't have knowledge. Don't have ideas, but not execution. That's insane. Yeah, I heard recently, I listened to this story about uh, the boxer Sugar Ray Leonard. I don't know if you, if you know who that is, but one, arguably one of the best boxers of all time. And as I was listening to this, I was like, wait a minute. I want to be insane like Sugar Ray Leonard. I want to be insane like Sugar Ray Leonard. You know, I said earlier, you know, my generation is soft. In my opinion, my generation is really soft. 
I, I said it earlier, I, I've been soft and I've been kind of a product of my generation. I, I'm not passing the blame. That's my own fault. But I'm 40 years old. Most of my peers are soft. They're soft. I don't know, you know, I mean, growing up, I mean, I suppose that 35 hours a week of television or more, um, I won't, you know, not getting political, but um, one of the biggest issues I had personally with the way that the healthcare system, the, the healthcare law that came out nine years ago, I, I have other issues with it. And again, this isn't political. One of the issues is you're allowed to stay on your parents' healthcare until you're 25. And I was like, what the heck kind of a message is that sending? Like you, you only have like statistically your life expectancy is 80 years old. And that means that from the ages of, you know, 21 to 25, like you're wasting four years. That's one twentieth of your life that we're continuing to treat them like a child. And so I think we're soft. My generation's soft. And to make matters worse, I think we're only getting softer. We're getting less responsible, less motivated, less determined, less impact, uh, less impactful. And so we're not, we're not being responsible. We're not motivated. Some of us, quite frankly, some of my generation is just downright lazy. So we're not having an impact. And, and again, at a risk of starting a political debate, and please don't, because that's not, uh, that's not the, the, the issue. Actually, it was 26. You know, again, you can be on it. You can be on their healthcare until 26. And, and to me, it's like, you know, what kind of message are we sending? Like you get to stay on mommy and daddy's health insurance till you're 26. I think that's ridiculous. And again, I, it's not an excuse for this generation. It's not an excuse. And I do believe that there's still hope. And so I was listening to this story about Sugar Ray Leonard. And I was like, you know what? This is the message people need to hear. They need to hear about Sugar Ray Leonard. Because this is a guy who got it. And so it tells a story about like as a child, Sugar Ray Leonard, he would wake up just like all the other kids. He would get dressed for school just like all the other kids. He'd walk to the bus stop just like all the other kids. But right there, you know, for that first hour, hour and a half, he's just like all the other kids. But when that bus pulled up, that's where the similarities between Sugar Ray Leonard and all the other kids ended. So the other kids, you know, they got on the bus, crowded on the bus, they took their seats, they sat down. Not Sugar Ray Leonard. He didn't get on the bus. He didn't sit down. As the bus drove away, Sugar Ray started running. He ran behind the bus all the way to school. Every single day. Rain, shine, I don't remember where he grew up. Sleet, snow, maybe there never was sleet or snow. It didn't matter. And he became world famous. Six time uh, middleweight, I guess. I don't remember what weight class he was. Six time world champion boxer. Six time world champion boxer. So he said this, I got this quote. I wrote this down. I had to replay this a few times. I just thought this was fascinating. This interview with him. He said, the other kids thought I was crazy because I would run in the rain, the snow. It didn't matter. I guess he did grow up where there's snow. He said, I did it because I didn't just want to be better than the next guy. I wanted to be better than all the guys. All the guys. He wanted to be the best in the world as a kid. And he became the best in the world at his craft. So I looked him up. I looked up Sugar Ray Leonard. I knew he was older than me you know, by about a generation. And sure enough, he's about exactly one generation older than me. He's 23 years older than me. Born in 1956, two years after my mother and father. Both my mother and father were born in 1954. And their generation, their generation was the one after the, the greatest, what's called the greatest generation. You know, you have this generation, the generation that fought in World War II, that went through the Great Depression that went through the Korean conflict, that went through Vietnam, that went through the advent of, you know, all these things. We call them the greatest generation. And I'm like, what the heck is my generation going to be called? What are we going to label my generation? We come up with like generation X and Y. Like, have that, is that really the point that we've reached? That we, all we get is a freaking letter? And I was thinking about it. I'm like, well... <laughs> What? Why is that? 
Why is that? Is you know, my generation expects instant gratification. My generation expects there to be no pain. My generation expects there to be somebody else to to clean up their mess, whether it, you know, be mommy and daddy or, you know, the president or Congress or whoever. And, and like, that's what they're expecting. You know, I, and I've been there myself. Like, I'm not pointing the finger. I mean, you know, in college, I, I remember I ran up a $2,000 credit card bill because I've felt entitled to all sorts of shiny things. I felt entitled to new $200 sunglasses. I felt entitled to that shirt. I felt entitled to be able to buy certain things when I probably shouldn't have, <laughs> namely alcohol. Um, again, I was like, I was like 20, you know, I felt entitled to those things. And then I remember when my father found the bill one day and, uh, I found out what getting a new one ripped feels like. Um, and my dad bailed me out. He didn't actually give me a choice. He never said, well, you know, I guess you're screwed. He, he, he paid the bill because he didn't want me to have to go through that. And I had to work for him to pay it off at $5 an hour. And I remember thinking, that's fair. Kind of sucks, but it's fair. He covered my butt. And now I have to work for, you know, 400 hours at less than minimum wage doing hard stuff. You know, this wasn't like, it wasn't like I was doing his accounting. You know, it wasn't like I was, the thing that I was, was doing was like, giving him, you know, marketing ideas like we would do later when I was, you know, in business with him. No, I was mowing his yard, carrying wood in, cleaning his floors. And that lasted for about 80 hours, maybe. Yeah, about 80 hours. Paid him back about 400 bucks of the 2000 And then we lost count. We both kind of lost count. We moved on. I got off easy. And I got softer. I got softer. And what I got from Sugar Ray Leonard was he shows us that we have to be willing to devote ourselves to the long haul. We we have to be willing to see absolutely no return on investment for sometimes years. You know, he did, there was there was no ROI that first day running behind the bus. There was no ROI the second day. There was no ROI. I mean, the kid's like 8 years old, right? You're not he's it's not like he's getting any return. I always think back, you know, I heard I've shared this story before. But I remember when I was about 20 years old standing on the driving range at the golf course and I was hitting balls. I was off to the side by myself and I was hitting balls. And I was working hard. It was, you know, 95 degrees, end of day, calluses on my hands. I'm exhausted. I'm hitting balls. And this guy comes and goes, wow, sure wish I could hit a golf ball like that. And I, and I kind of looked at him and go, yeah. But I remember thinking as he walked away, I was like, no, you don't. You don't wish you, you don't wish that you had invested eight, nine, 10 hours a day in the gym, on the golf course, on the practice tee, whether it was cold, whether it was hot. I mean, I have like video proof. I remember one day of my, my friend Hunter and I, we were out there, the ground was frozen. There was snow, but we had cleared a spot to practice for an hour. And I remember many times playing in tournaments We would play 36 holes in a day and the heat index would be in the 110 range and I couldn't walk for two days. I I had cramped up so badly because there's no way to get electrolytes into my system that fast. You know, and like, I remember those things and I remember thinking, no, you don't. No, you don't. But one of the things that I I had when I played golf was, you know, because for 10 years I had played with no return on investment. I didn't make any money. Yeah, it was fun. I had fun. I enjoyed winning. I was competitive and getting those trophies was really cool, but I didn't have a return on that investment. And, you know, thankfully, I mean, I, I, my, my dad, you know, I mean, he invested tens of thousands of dollars as well. Just like we do with our daughter playing soccer. Now there's no return on that investment right now. 
other than she has fun. And that's you know, more than enough for me as a parent. So we have to be willing to see absolutely no return on investment for maybe years. The thing is, my generation, the generation even before me, the generation after me, we want it now. And we want someone else to give it to us. And so again, we keep getting softer and softer and softer. And so what I got from Sugar Ray Leonard's example is we have to stay completely and passionately dedicated to our vision. Even if we we can't see that proverbial light at the end of the tunnel. You know, the thing is, if if you talk to the people who are around Sugar Ray growing up, nobody thought he could make it as a boxer. He was too small. He was too slow. He was too poor. You know, pick something. Too dumb. Too thin. Too fat. Too old. Too young. Too short. Too tall. Too whatever. And we put these labels on ourselves. And other people put these labels on ourselves. But Sugar Ray Leonard proved him wrong six times. See, he wasn't soft. He he did not expect instant gratification. I mean, think about how how could a child who eight, nine, I mean, like our daughter, you know, our daughter, she wants to play in the World Cup. She wants to have her own vet office when she's in her 20s. Okay, she has big dreams. But how could you expect at the age of eight to be a world champion tomorrow? Like our daughter, it would be asinine to expect her to play in the next Women's World Cup or the next Olympics. She would be 12 in the next World Cup. She'll be 10 in the next Olympics or nine. It would be asinine, right? But he worked through the pain. He didn't expect anyone else to do it for him. And he kept working at his dream day after day, after day, to the point that others thought he was insane and wasting time. Others thought he was insane. Others thought he was insane. Others think you're insane. That's one of the things I, I, it's getting more common that people are working from home and running an online business, but we, we still hear, we all have those naysayers in our lives, right? We all have the crazy uncle who's like, when are you going to get a real job, son? Huh? I work, I work my back break and work when you're going to get a real job. Cause sitting at a computer and spreading ideas that transform lives, recording a podcast, that can't possibly be a real job. Could it? You know, see, you're not, you're not bringing in any money. That can't be a real job. Now, one of the things we teach in the Passion to Profit Path is that you should be monetizing early on. But I don't set unrealistic expectations like you're going to make $5,000 a month starting in month one. No, you might make 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks, but it starts that pattern going. And and are you willing to put in the work when you're making, when you only make 500 bucks in your first three months or $1,000 in your first year? Are you willing to continue to put in the work? like Sugar Ray Leonard did, because he knew that insane dedication leads to insane success. And so my call to you today is be insane in your commitment to execution. Sure, be insane in your commitment to learning, but be insane in your commitment to execution because it's so frustrating to see so many people thinking that the answer is in more information. And it's not. The answer is an execution. Be insanely committed to making things happen. So when you read something on my blog, when you learn something in a video, when you learn something on my podcast, when you learn something elsewhere, when you learn something from a course or from a book, digest it, think about it, and apply it. Apply it within 72 hours. So we tell our students in No Product, No Problem and List Launch Academy and we tell our start members like, I don't want you to think about this for two weeks. I don't want you to finish the course. I'll tell you what, we studied, we studied our top students, the students that are getting results in No Product, No Problem, for example, and in List Launch Academy, and here's what we noticed. We noticed that they'll log in, say, we'll say a Monday. They'll log in on a Monday. You would think the most successful students, right, were the ones who completed the course in 50 days. We get asked those, how long does the course take? How long does the course take? And and as a marketer, I have an answer for that. And we explain that, but I got to be honest. I got to be honest. What difference does it make? 
That's a that's a that's just a terrible question. I almost said that's a stupid question, and maybe maybe I should. I should like that's a that's a terrible question to ask. How long does the course take? No, what kind of results are you going to get? We're all look like you know what. Here's the thing I've noticed. Um, the longer I work out, focused and intense, the better shape I get in. It's the answer is not in a 22 minute workout. Can you get a decent workout in 22 minutes? Absolutely. Can you build a a body that's in the best shape of your life in 22 minutes a day? Not unless you've been completely sedentary your entire life. No. And so how long does a course take is an irrelevant question because here's what we found. The students that what we'll notice is they'll go, they'll log in on Monday and they'll be logged in because we can measure this stuff. They'll be logged in for an hour and they won't log in for five days. And then they'll log in again and they won't log in for two weeks. And then they'll log in again like back to back days and they won't log in for 10 days. Why? Because they're applying what they learned. And they're executing and they will execute and execute and execute until they're ready to come back and do the next lesson. Stop thinking about it and do it now. They're not thinking about it. They're not studying it any more than they have to. They're looking at the lesson and they are applying what they're learning and they're super successful. Those are the students that are super successful. So my questions for you. And I would love if you'd leave a comment. I'd love if you'd leave a comment. Uh, I'll give you the URL in a moment. Actually, I'll give it to you now. mattmcwilliams.com forward slash TAG299. Almost at episode 300. Holy crap. Um, I didn't even know that until just now. <laughs> I said the URL pulled up. I was like, wow. mattmcwilliams.com forward slash TAG299. TAG is the affiliate guy, if you didn't figure that out. Um, I'm probably the only one who felt the need to explain that. But anyway, what are you insanely dedicated to no matter what the naysayers say? What is it? It can be personal, it could be business, doesn't matter to me. What are you insanely dedicated to no matter what the naysayers say? And the second question, what's something you've been studying, thinking about, and waiting for the right time? Okay, think about that. There's something. You've been studying it. You've been thinking about it. You're waiting for the right time. My question is, will you start it right now? Today. You will finish listening to this. If, if, if you need to listen to this again, okay. Probably don't. But will you, will you do it today? Today. Like, will you stop listening to this when, you, when you're done? When this episode is over, Will you go apply what you've learned? Will you go make a decision? And will you make the right time today? Because today is the right time. Whatever that thing is that you've been waiting forever, or you've been studying it ad nauseum, you're now an expert on the subject and yet you haven't done anything with it. Will you start it right away? That's my question for you today. Or my two questions for you. So again, you can leave your answers at mattmcwilliams.com forward slash TAG299. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguy.tv. And if you have a question, you can ask it at asktheaffiliateguy.com. Who knows, might end up being featured on this podcast. <laughs>